some time and what it could look like after a few weeks, a few months, or even years of a relationship with a company. So I'm gonna flip over to a new tab for ABC vendor. This is just an example vendor in my system. And now what we can see here is the information has been filled out to completion, but the information being asked of me, or rather just the fields that we see displayed. I wanted to point these out a little bit further. Now, I can imagine that not every single field here, not every single attribute assigned to this ABC vendor is applicable to everyone in the audience. Applicable in that case, what I mean there is the information being tracked might be applicable to some of our clients and might not be applicable to somebody else. But either way, that won't be an issue. In the event that you weren't on any previous demonstrations, especially ones that went through contract management, the same configuration available to contract fields are available to company fields in front of us. So if you feel like some of these fields are not appropriate, not to worry. We can always go ahead and unassign the fields from this type of vendor or company. And if you ever feel like some information was not being displayed here that we do like to track, we can always do the opposite. We can add brand new fields to the system and assign them to any number of companies that we feel is appropriate. Now, this is what we consider more of a primary record, a primary company that we track in our system. And the reason I'm bringing that up is because we can actually track subsidiaries or any other company that might be related to this primary, if you will, in a number of ways. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to scroll down relatively slowly, and I wanted to point out the more significant areas on this page that I think users should get used to doing or going to when using the system. So right off the bat, what we're gonna be passing are what we call subtables. Now subtables, these are the out of the box subtables for company records in the system. You can add upon the subtables as much as you'd like. What I mean by that is you can add additional fields being asked of you in each of these subtables. And if a subtable that you can think of is not shown here, not to worry, we can add brand new subtables as well. Now subtables in general, I think are really useful for information that might not be needed or known during the initial input of a record, but something that could be added down the line. But most importantly, I think the value of the subtables comes from the way the information is displayed. So very quickly, I think a very appropriate one to show would be additional addresses in the event that this company might have multiple locations. Of course, right above what we saw was an address assigned to the primary location of this company, but in the event that there's some more we want to track, we can always go ahead and add them. Adding into a subtable is simply going to bring you to yet another list of fields that you're going to fill out associated with this particular table. So I'm just going to say this is the ABC subsidiary, and we're going to add in an address. Adding in the new address is extremely simple. And what, ha what happens after the fact is it opens up the subtable a little bit and allows us to see a few more pieces of information. Now, of course, right now in front of us, we only have one additional address, but in the event that we had mu much more, we can always go ahead and filter down the table as much as we'd like. That way, if we're only looking within a specific state or a specific country even, we can define that further and see a list of potentially secondary addresses. Next up, what I wanted to focus on is the files and attachment section. So the files and attachment section is very important because really every file associated with this company should be right in front of us. And when I say every file, what I mean by that is any file that's not directly a contract, because in that event, you'd likely want to have that file associated with the appropriate contract record. But really any other supporting documentation associated with a company is recommended to be kept here. So right in front of us, what we see are two files, the W-9 and some banking information for this company. And if I had some more information or more documentation that I wanted to upload, it's just simply a matter of dragging and dropping it directly here. We offer unlimited storage for every single company record in the system. And we also offer the ability to upload any type of file. So if you wanted to upload a PDF, a Word document, an Excel spreadsheet, any email communications back and forth, that is supported. To add a little bit more organization 
to this page here, what you can do is you can have folders. You can add as many different folders as you'd like. So in this case, what I have here is a second folder specific for my insurance certificates. So that way, just to be a little bit more organized, not to get lost in so many different documents, I can organize myself a little bit better by adding as many different folders as I'd like. Next up, I wanted to focus on some other areas that are also found within contract records, starting with templates. So we offer the ability to build as many different templates as you'd like associated with a company. Now, in this case, it's typically by our clients done with standard forms, typically onboarding forms, just, just to keep it organized within our CRM here, whatever we might be using it for as opposed to contracts that you might want to be building off of contract records. But the opportunity is there. You're able to build as many different templates as you'd like associated with each company. Next, what I wanted to show you is the contacts subtable. So this is another out of the box table that you have on your company records for contacts. So in this case, we have an individual, John Doe. He's what we can consider our primary contact or our admin associated with the agreement or the company. So in this case, all the information associated with every single contact, whether it's the primary or any additional that we just simply find emails of, we want to track it here. Now, adding a contact within the company record doesn't just simply add a new person to look at. It also adds other opportunities elsewhere within the system, notably sending emails. When it comes to sending emails, you can define from the company that you're doing business with, what contact you'd like to choose, as well as any e-signature processes. Whether we're using the proprietary IntelliSign tool provided by Cobblestone, if we're using the third-party e-sign connector connecting to DocuSign or Adobe Sign, when we're doing business with, in this case, ABC vendor, and we're sending something out for a signature, we're only gonna be seeing John Doe here or any potentially new contacts I might add. A little later on, what we're going to be seeing is John Doe logged into the vendor client collaboration gateway, which is going to be a section of today's meeting. And in that case, we can define what other contacts beyond John Doe might also have access to that gateway. We'll focus on that in a moment as we continue on. I wanted to also point out the task email workflow and alert section as well. So when it comes to this section, just as configurable as contract records, you can have as many different tasks or alerts assigned to a company record. And in this case, this really assists with any onboarding processes because when a new company is added, a workflow could potentially kick off to notify an individual to ultimately review the information submitted by the vendor or submitted by a user for a company and ultimately get approved. We're gonna be focusing on that when we're talking about the self-service registration a little later today. Now the last three sections on this page in particular, I think are also extremely important. So first up, we have linked companies. Now in this case, if we wanted to have subsidiaries or child companies in their own dedicated company record, as opposed to the additional addresses we saw above, we're not just losing any functionality there. What you can do is actually link a company to another, you can provide a reason, and this just adds a nice way to navigate from one company to the next and ultimately get to see the relationship between the two companies. Now finally, what we have in front of us is also very important and very, very much used by our clients. And that's the related contract records and related request records. So what we can see is we have two contracts already in place with this organization, and we see one request in place with this organization. So this is a nice way to get an idea of how many contracts we have with certain companies, whether they're vendors, customers, or what have you. And once again, allows us to easily navigate from this company record directly to any other associated contracts or requests without having to perform a search or run a report. It's very straightforward. What else I can mention about these areas, these two tables in particular, is when it comes to contract records, 
it's we're not just limited to having one company associated with it. More than one company can be assigned to one record. And even though a company is not the primary company associated with a contract record, maybe it's just a secondary company you just assigned after the fact, even though it's not the primary, it will still appear here. So it's just a nice way, even if a company is just slightly related to a contract, you'll still be able to find it going under the company record. So this is what we see as the user for a more completed or established company in the system. But what about what a user catches wind of a company that we're likely going to be doing business with, so we want to add them ourselves to the system? Well, in that case, we're going to flip over to the next tab, of Add Company. Now, adding a company is almost identical to adding a contract record. So in the previous stream, what we were looking at was a vendor record. Information shown on that record was specific to vendors. But what about our customers? What about our partners? When we open up this list here, we're gonna be seeing different types of companies, or rather company records, that we can track in our system. So if you could imagine, information being tracked on a customer might be much different than that of a vendor. For our vendor, you might be saying, you know, how, what, what kind of goods and services do they provide? We're likely gonna to wanna to have that piece of information on there. For our customers, however, we likely don't need that. So instead of being asked of irrelevant data when we go under these records or add brand new companies to the system, we get to choose which fields are applicable to which types of companies that way, we're only being asked and only entering the most relevant data when it comes to adding a new customer, a new vendor, and anybody else. So let's flip, let's change gears here. What if I am the vendor? What if I am John Doe of ABC Vendor? What can I do here? So in that case, we're gonna go to another tab, and it's gonna bring us into the Vendor Client Collaboration Gateway. Now, right off the bat, this looks very brief of a page. You can expand upon this page a little bit further if you'd like. You can brand it. You can add your logo to the screen. That way, when your vendors access your Vendor Client Collaboration Gateway, they can feel a little bit more at home. Now, in this case, I'm John Doe. I'm the main contact of ABC Vendor. Now, considering we already have a contract in place with the internal users of the system, I have a unique opportunity to actually interact with the users regarding that contract. So in this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna simply follow the main menu option of contracts, and I'm gonna choose my contracts. This is going to bring me to a list of any contract in the system that the internal users deemed appropriate for me to actually collaborate on or interact with. Now, even though we only we, all, we saw a second contract in the system, that second contract was actually provide, or given the ability to be hidden from the vendor associated with it. So very quickly, I'm just gonna follow the view option. This is gonna bring the user or rather the vendor into what I like to call kind of like a light version of the contract record. The information that we just see displayed here is up to the internal users for what should and should not be displayed. So if we feel like not every piece of information is appropriate for the vendor to see, not to worry, we can always go ahead and hide the field. So even though internal users can see these different fields, the external party might not be too appropriate for them to see. Now, what can we do as the vendor here? So as we scroll down, we're gonna keep seeing that it's a little bit more familiar with the internal as we might've expected. However, once again, we see the attached file section. Now, in this case, what we can see here is there are no files associated with this agreement applied. So just like the fields that we saw above, the internal users get to choose what files should and should not be displayed to the vendor themselves. So that way, even if we had 100 files, if none of them were deemed appropriate to be seen, we would still see that there are no files as the vendor perspective. Well, luckily as a vendor, what I can do is I can provide my own versions, my own copies, my own documents on the record. 
So if I'm in a negotiation, I can go ahead and add my own version without having to email it out. I can just do it right here. I can change the category to whatever I'd like and can provide a description of whatever I'd like. And any version control that was previously put into play when it comes to the contract negotiation and uploading as a user will still follow the same logic as the version control if I were to be uploading it manually as a user. So if I've uploaded version number two, it'll appear as version number two. So we're gonna go ahead and add a file real quick. And I'll save that file. In this case, the file is automatically provided with a description, providing the user information that I, as the vendor, was the one who uploaded this file. To keep on with this collaboration aspect of the vendor perspective, what vendors can also do is add notes and comments. So internal users are able to do this too, and just as similar to the files associated with the vendor, internal users can define whether or not a note is appropriate to be shown outwardly. Save that note. So it's just a nice way for both the internal users and your external vendors to have a quick little correspondence between one another. And then finally, what we get down to is the purchase order table. So in the event that you also have the purchase order add-on module, if any POs that you might have with a company is associated with the contract, and that contract's viewable by the vendor, they're also going to be able to see a snippet of information for the PO associated. So they can de determine whether or not the order was placed, what the status of the PO is, and just in general, you know, how it's affecting the financials associated with the contract. So overall, like I mentioned before, I think the vendor-client collaboration gateway is a really great way to get an understanding of a light version of the system, without having to purchase the vendor contact, in this case, a user license. You can have any number of your vendor contacts, your company contacts, your customer contacts access this gateway without any additional cost. So now that we've focused on understanding how vendors can view existing contracts in the system, well, what if they wanted to request a new contract? Well, in that case, they simply can by creating a new request within the system. Once again, the fields that we see associated with requesting a contract by the vendor, this is all going to be able to be configured by the internal users. So if we wanted a little less information being asked of the vendor to apply when they request for a contract, there's no, not, nothing to worry about. We can configure this list to, to whatever we want. I also wanted to point out a little bit more vendor focused features associated with the vendor client collaboration gateway. So remember, I'm John Doe. I'm the primary contact or the admin of ABC Vendor, the organization I'm logged on in under. If I have additional users I wanted to add myself, additional contacts I wanted to add myself, what we already saw today was the internal user adding a new contact, but in the event that I just brought in a new employee, I want to add them the, for them the ability to log into this, I easily can. For existing contacts, I can actually access, once again, a light version of the contact list that we saw in the company record. So if I change my email, if I change my name, if I change my location, I can easily access this information here and potentially edit the information. And then finally, what we can see here is a light version of the company record itself. So this is really great if we have changed, if we've moved locations, if we've added additional you know, services to our organization, if we wanted to upload our insurance certificates ourselves, we easily can show through the company record. So overall, I think the vendor client collaboration gateway is a really 
great way to have your vendors interact with the internal users without always having to rely on emails and ultimately gives the vendor a little bit more insight on what's going on with contracts and it also assists the internal users from doing the same thing. Just a nice way to collaborate. Now I'm going to go ahead and log out. And we're going to change gears once again. What we saw today was an existing company record within the system. And we also saw an existing contract within the system through the vendor perspective. But now what we're going to be doing is playing the role of a brand new vendor, someone who I've never done business with before. I came across your organization's gateway here to request for contracts on your website. What can I do here? Well, in this case, instead of logging in, I'm going to have to create a new user account. Just like we saw when adding a request or viewing the contract, the fields that were being asked from this new vendor, from being added to the system, is completely configurable. So if we feel like less information is needed, by all means. So let's go ahead and put in some information here. I'll just fill in the required fields. We'll continue. And then I'm going to be asked to input my personal information as opposed to my company information. So in this case, I'll just be Jane Doe. Plug in my username and password to access this gateway, as well as my email address. I've read and agreed to the terms and conditions, and I'll save. That's all I can do for now. Now, in this case, we don't want your vendors or your new customers just to be able to quickly access the gateway and potentially view information that they might not have a permission to do so. So alternatively, what I have here, what I've set up in this system in particular, is a workflow. So we're going to go back to the internal system. What we're going to do here is we're going to go to my entire company list. We're going to go down to XYZ here, in particular XYZ Incorporated. What we're going to be seeing under this active column is XYZ Incorporated is not active. What does this mean? Well, this means that internal users, when they start adding contract records to the system, they're not going to be able to choose XYZ Incorporated as an option. That's more of the internal aspect of it. As Jane Doe, the company contact who just registered XYZ Incorporated, Jane Doe is not able to log into the vendor client collaboration gateway and change her address if she needs to. But what we want to do here is we want to go ahead and view the details real quick. Because what you can have set up in your system, in my case, what I've done is I've set up a workflow process. And what that workflow process is, is when any new company registers themselves through that gateway, what we're going to be seeing is an automatic alert or task roll on, in this case for Bob Smith, who I'm logged in as. The person who's in charge of this can always be anybody of your organization or even a team of individuals. And what I want to do is I want to confirm whether or not we're okay to doing business with this organization moving forward. To get a little bit more detail on this task here, I'm going to simply view it. And that's going to bring me to the task record where I can at least read the details associated with it. Please review the information submitted by the potential customer. If approved, please complete the task and mark company as active. Okay? Simple enough. So we'll go ahead and approve the task. I've, re I've reviewed the information. I'm comfortable with doing business with this organization. So when we scroll up, what we're gonna be seeing is active is now yes, active is true. 
We'll go to the company list just to confirm on that page as well. We're going to see active is hit the true. So, of course, in your system, you might want a little bit more of a drawn out onboarding process, a few steps that have to be taken instead of just simply a yes, no, this is okay to go. And of course, that is very easily configured in the system. What we just saw today was simply an example, just a one, one step process of getting a, a company onboarded. But now what I can do after simply saying that I've approved the fact that this company can access the system, I'm gonna be able to, one, add contracts and assign it to this organization if I need to. And then two, as Jane Doe, I can finally log in. I can potentially upload my, or update my addresses. I can potentially request for contracts. So we'll go back here. We're gonna sign in. Our login credentials were actually confirmed via email, as well as another important aspect of logging in, which is the company ID. So we're gonna go ahead and log in as Jane Doe here. And now just as we saw as John Doe for ABC vendor, we have all the features available to us as Jane. I can upload, I can add additional contacts, I can change user info, I can add or change my company information, I can view any contracts that I have with the internal users, if there were any, right now there aren't, so we're not gonna follow that today. But what I can do is at least show you how they can add a request. So like I mentioned, we can build upon this list of fields as we, as we see fit. And I'll submit my request. Request has been successfully created. And now when we go back in the internal user, we can take a look at the requests in the system. And see that waiting for us. This concludes the primary aspects of vendor management within the system. We went over today just what an overall company record could potentially look like, the features associated with company records in the system, what adding a company looks like, whether it's through the vendor perspective or the internal user perspective. And then, of course, we also saw, saw how a vendor can actually access current contracts that you're doing business with them through the vendor client collaboration gateway. We're gonna open the floor for questions now. So if anyone has any questions, I'll be more than happy to assist with anything that might be on your mind. So please, and just go ahead and ask as many questions as you like. Thanks so much.